We made it, episode 50, fine music. It's so hard to keep track. I have to research nowadays, especially who I cover, because I'm usually off the cuff, but today I decided not to go off the cuff. I prepared. Mm-hmm. Yeah, simply because uh, I just felt like that was the thing to do, because this is an artist not well known in America. And uh, it's kind of, uh, if it's another niche, okay, another niche. And that niche would be ambient, dance. Those are two genres that fit together thanks to some trailblazers like Kraftwerk and definitely Vangelis, right? Very versatile in the things that he's done. And there are other acts who are not as versatile. So basically what happened was I was looking over this guy's albums and saying, oh, yeah, this one sounds like this. And that one sounds like that. So that's what you're going to be inflicted with right now. Who am I talking about? Pete Namluk. Have you heard of him? Pete Namluk. Now, uh, what's the spelling on the last name? N-A-M-L-O-O-K. And the interesting part about it is, is, of course, that's not his real name. Pete Namlik. His, his real name is uh, Peter Kuhlman. <laughs> K-O-O-L-M-A-N. So he just reversed his name because he thought the name was too cheesy. <laughs> became Pete Namlik. Yeah. So the one thing I didn't do was bring up my media player. Uh, but I can show you something that's impressive about this guy. He's from Germany. He died in 2012, had a short life, but in that short life, he did a lot. So I'm just going to try to demonstrate. Information on him. Found it in, of all places, the Prague archives. But his music really has virtually nothing to do with Prague. They say progressive electronic, probably because he was so versatile. He, he collaborated with many people, and I mean many people. I'm going to have to use the, uh, the mouse to get through this, right? Uh, yeah, here's his discography. Okay, get ready, people. Yeah. Ready? Hmm. He made a few uh, albums. Yeah. There. Oh, wait, wait. There's a few more. Oh God, collaborations. Okay, we finally finished that. So trying to find, here, stop to share. Trying to find his material was difficult. It's not widely available because everything was kind of small released. So I was able to find a few things and the few things that I found really turned me on. They were fantastic. And so I just want to mention some of those using my media player, there it is. So wildly varying results from what he does. But the first album that hit a big for him was called Air, came out in 1993. And this is truly an ambient album except for one track, number six, Arc. That is completely dance music. Hmm. Totally instrumental, by the way. And so uh, if I had to tell people what this sounds like, I would say it's kind of a cross between uh, Tangerine Dream and the future sound of London. So people who know those acts will have a good idea. When it's dance, it's dance. And when it's ambient, it's ambient. It's all in the same album. So it's just a brilliant album. His whole Air series is brilliant. Uh, the one I discovered last was Air 2 because it was so hard to find. And as you can see with the imaginative song titles. <laughs> How do you title an instrumental? Well, yeah, that's a special skill, isn't it? <laughs> 
maybe he said to hell with that because <laughs> but each of these really has a distinct sound mm -hmm. and uh, i named them myself but you can't be creative on windows media player because windows media player updates and it just destroys everything that isn't automatically there mm. so all my descriptions are gone <laughs> for these songs and it's just um, crying about it but that's the way it is you know okay and that's why my ratings are gone okay update it wipes everything except what's official hmm. yeah but air two is fantastic it is just a fantastic ambient album uh if i had to equate who it sounds like maybe you've heard of jean-michel jar oxygen something in that direction also steve roach there was a cross between Steve Rose and Jean-Michel Jarre. Air 2 is it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just love these albums to death. Every single one of these that I have. I only have like maybe six of them. So I got Air 1, Air 2. There's Air 3 and Air 4. Air 3 and Air 4 uh, head more in the dance direction, especially Air 4. Air 3 is uh, closer to... Uh, yeah, still in that same cross of Jean-Michel Jarre and Steve Roach. But also, it gets exotic in, uh, in this album. And it's kind of like uh, Michael Brook. I don't know if you've ever heard of Michael Brook. He uh, collaborated with Brian Eno. The Brian Eno, many collaborations, right? But his collaboration with Brian Eno was very exotic sounding, otherworldly, like an exotic planet, kind of the way to describe it. So each of these has a totally different flavor. And uh, the Air 5 is another flavor yet. Air 5 has some singing in it, but it's not in English. Um, yeah, so that's just, it's, it's almost all out dance, that one. Like the ambience is almost gone. But then he's got these other albums. That's just the Air series, which I really love. I've got these other two albums. I was very selective when it came to his music because some of his collaborations, uh, you know, too ambient, get kind of boring, mm -hmm. honestly. And these two albums, though, wildly different. Free Your Mind is my favorite of all of his albums. It's... Uh, Uh, if you've ever heard of William Orbit, mm -hmm. yeah, he uh, had uh, his own Strange Cargo was his na uh, record name. And uh, famous as a producer, too. Yeah, I think he produced a Madonna album. So it's really got a good da uh, dance groove to it, right? But it's not just simple dance. This is very complex dance. Of all his albums, this is probably the most progressive, if you want to call it hitting into progressive rock. I don't know. But it's just, it's wonderfully complex. That's what I love about Free Your Mind. Uh, it, it really feeds your mind. It really does. Really love that. And all the tracks are like about 10 minutes, uh, except one. And different flavors. It's kind of what you see is what you're going to get. Dream Reader is, yeah, it's dreamy. And Samba Giselle has that Samba flavor. And Real World uh, and the Colony yeah, gets spacey. Which brings me to the last one I'm going to talk about, and that's uh, Planetarium, which is a collaboration. And uh, I think there's two of them, but this is Planetarium 2 is my favorite because this one really is a lot like a Vangelis album in the sense that if you know Vangelis, he did soundtracks uh, for some movies that are well known, like Blade Runner. And so this is the most Blade Runner of all of his albums called Planetarium 2. So I think it was produced for a planetarium in Europe. And so it's just like a going on a space voyage. But uh, it, it's danceable, it's ambient, it's just uh, takes me to another world. So I love that. Those are my two favorite probably, but I love all of these uh, seven albums. So if you like, Vangelis, or Ambient, or Electronic Dance, uh, 
Another German comes to mind. There's a, a German artist named Schiller, who I found by happy accident when my wife was my girlfriend and she was in China. And she was telling me, oh, I heard this song. It's really good. And uh, who is it? Who is it? Uh, she didn't know the, the name to how to pronounce it in English. So I, I looked it up and it was uh, Celine Dion, <laughs> right? Which is no surprise, right? It's just a song for those who love the romantic songs. But when I Googled it, I got Schiller D Dion. Huh. Now, what's Schiller Dion? I thought, that's strange. Never heard of Schiller Dion. You know? So I investigated and I found Schiller. And he is more one-dimensional than Pete and Am look. His, his music is ambient dance. It's either ambient or dance, but it doesn't really venture like Pete and Am looks music really ventured in wildly different directions, right? An exotic soundtrack. Schiller is someone you could depend on. He, he had an ambient track and then he would have a dance track and his dance tracks always had like a vocalist, some guest vocalist. And uh, he would do shows and record them. Those would be his albums. So I guess it's a secondary recommendation for Schiller. If you like ambient dance at all, you're probably going to love Schiller, not well known in America, just like Pete Namlick, not well known in America, but very big in Germany and Europe for that matter. So that's my recommendation. Thank you for enduring my musical taste. <laughs>